All right, so it's been a while since I did a video, so I just wanted to share what I've been up to. So right now, I'm working on uh, changing my garage door opener and changing the way the garage door opens. So currently, I have a regular overhead door, kind of uh, garage door opener is in the middle. It's uh, a 7 by 16 garage door. We'll go in there and take a peek in a minute. So uh, LiftMaster used to have the 8500, which had a horrible name. If you looked them online, you'd find all kinds of problems with them. I think the 8500Cs, the control boards would overheat and burn up. 8500Ws, the way they implemented the Wi-Fi, they would just open the door at random times. You come home or go out in the morning and your garage door would be wide open. So the 98022 is supposed to resolve those issues. And uh, on top of what is in the box, I bought two accessories. So I've got a, a keypad so that I can open the garage door when I'm walking around outside the house. And then this is mounted beside the garage door, obviously because it's a side operator. So the, uh, it would be kind of natural to put the main controller right beside it with the wire. Then I have a wireless uh, control panel that I'll put beside the man door inside the garage so I don't have to run wires to it and uh, make the place look a little worse than it needs to be. And then lastly, I've got new springs. These are custom springs that were manufactured for me. So I gave them the dimensions of the door and the weight. So it's 7 by 16. My door is 230 pounds. And given that, with a 412 pitch, they wanted me to buy these springs and wind them 11 times. So they came in these FedEx tubes. And by the time I got them, they were open. But nothing fell out. Luckily, the dude taped the uh, bars to the springs. Otherwise, I would have been short some bars. So to take a look at the 98022, it's only been for sale for a couple months, and it's already got a software update. So I don't know if the original ones were misbehaving or what. But when you open it, it's got a uh, a deadbolt, which is great because uh, normally I would put a uh, a vice grip in the track when I didn't want the garage door open whereas this will actually does that for you. You can deadbolt it with this contraption. So that's good. These are don't have a great name for themselves but they haven't updated them. So sometimes these things can malfunction and some people choose not to use them but I'm going to try it out. Hopefully it works out. There's two styles a 12 volt and a 24 volt and uh, this is whatever probably a 12 volt because there's a, a 12 volt battery in here and you can see the battery dates brand new it's 5 11 23 it's only a couple months old in here so you get the replacement for the uh, light for the garage door opener so that's there I think it beeps and does other stuff so we'll figure that out they come pre-programmed you just plug it in and it'll work for the uh, garage door opener that it comes with. It's got the uh, photo cells pre-wired so that's pretty easy to install. And it's got a, a ball of wire for something. It's got the um, holders for the photo eyes. This is the uh, the control panel here. Looks like it's got some kind of a motion sensor on it and it's got a, a light and some programming buttons. I believe that the um, Wi-Fi and everything is integrated on the door opener. That's what the salesperson was telling me. So it's not in this like the 8500W and it makes it more reliable as a result. It's got the bag of hardware for whatever. A, uh, a clicker. I don't use these because I don't want to leave them unattended in the vehicle. And it's got the uh, part for grabbing onto the door opener and the tube for the garage door operator. So that's all that stuff there. And then the uh, garage door opener is actually here so you can mount it on either side of the door depending on your space availability. It's got uh, set 44 in here. Of course, I don't know what the heck that means, but there it is. Some kind of instructions. You have to set the door and the drum and everything, or it will not operate. You'll see that in the instructions. 
and then there's some sales literature here. They, they're trying to dabble in like the electronic light bulbs and door, or sorry, um, the remote receptacles and stuff like in home automation to go with the MyQ software. So that's uh, a bit of stuff that's in here. This is a grounded receptacle, which needs to be right beside the unit. So you need to have an electrician or yourself put in a, a new receptacle for this thing more than likely. So that's uh, pretty much it. It's a fairly heavy box. It's well packaged. This was shipped halfway across Canada. Well, three quarters across Canada for me. And uh, no real problems there other than the tubes nearly escaped. The springs nearly escaped the box. So we'll take a look at the garage now. So it's an absolute disaster. I've been here for a year and a half now and I haven't been able to work on this car yet. Um, but yeah, so you can see I've got a lot of head space there, but the garage door is like flat with the uh, opening. So that's not cool. So we've got to fix that. So you can see the old garage door opener, which I'm quite happy with it. It's very quiet and it does this thing, it opens and closes the door. It's probably five years old or something like that. But uh, just have to get rid of it so that I can have another three feet of clearance above the door. So we'll take a look at that. So, like I said, I bought a remote for the uh, to put by the uh, man door, which is over there, rather than having a wired one. We'll talk about how I'm kind of modifying the garage as well. You can see that thing is nice and quiet. Can't complain. But my intent is to put this the tracks at a 412 pitch and clip them onto the uh, I-beams. So I've got some Unistrut or Superstrut clamps. So I'll put two of these up on the bar on the uh, I-beam and then put some uh, Unistrut across and then I'll bring the uh, arm up on an angle. And then if you look at the side profile of the garage, like you can see like from the face of the mount to the edge of the track, you need about three or four inches so that it doesn't hit anything. So I'll have to mount the track about four inches down below that I-beam. And uh, with the calculated springs that the guy sold me, he used some kind of spring calculator on some website somewhere, I suppose, or whatever. He told me I need to do like 11 turns on each spring. So to weigh the door, what you have to do is uh, well you need to have like an analog scale more than likely if you have digital scale it doesn't stay reading long enough it just takes a snapshot in time and it gives you a number whereas an analog you got all the time in the world to weigh something so that's what you're going to need might as well have one of these in the garage anyway they're pretty useful so to weigh the uh, door you're going to need a, a scale two door bars like spring winding bars. And you see, so pull up on that. You're going to lift the uh, garage door, put the scale on it, under it rather, but you're going to have like zero if the door is balanced correctly. So you need to um, wind back this spring enough to loosen the uh, cables on each end. And then you'll find the full weight of the door. You have to give it like a bit of a jiggle just so it's not hanging up on a wheel somewhere. And this door ended up being 230 pounds, which is on the heavy side of her doors because it gets uh, one of the second thickest insulating doors you can get for kind of residential. But whatever. So that is that. And uh, I'll need to get my receptacle mounted up in here somewhere, which shouldn't be too big of a deal. Maybe for some people you might want to just call an electrician and have them do it. They can usually find the most economical way of doing something. If they're an honest business person anyway. And uh, so I'm going to mount the uh, control panel. They say like mount it five feet off the floor so that a kid can't use it and squash something or whatever. And uh, I, don't, I didn't want to mount it five feet on the side of this door because then you could see it from outside. So that seemed like a bad idea. So I, cause uh, like the way I've got my door set up, like you can't open it from the inside. 
And then the man door, like I said before, I'm going to have the remote device over here so that I can uh, be able to open and close the garage door from the, uh, the man door inside of the house. And then I'll do another video, I think, to talk about the rest of the garage work that I'm doing because it's a... Uh, there's a bit to talk about there. So how about I stop this video and then I'll get another video going. So uh, eventually I'll have a video with the 98022 installed. It's going to probably take uh, a month or two to get there. And I'll explain what's going on there in the next video. So thank you for watching.